Tesla's full self-driving version 12.5 seems to be a major breakthrough. We might actually have the big jump we've been waiting for. Not only do we have Elon Musk telling us that there's magic in this release, but today we'll also cover all the comments made by Ashok Alswami, the main director of Autopilot, and other members of the Tesla team, Phil Dwan and Shurhari Sampath Kumar. Version 12.5 is being slowly released to just a few users, and Elon is saying regular users will likely get a 12.5.3 for wide release. But the reactions from the early users are extremely positive, with many actually saying it is done. We'll watch some of those videos today. And the person I've got today is Larry Goldberg. Larry's uh, driving 12.5 or 12 point. Oh, he's just got 12.5 being to download in his car. He's going to be driving it very shortly. Thank you so much, Larry. Thanks for having me, Herbert. So, you know, it's one thing when you hear Elon praising that one day we'll get FSD. In fact, at the earnings call, he said that he thinks that we're going to get unsupervised FSE, which is RoboTaxi ready by the end of this year. Shocked if it's not next year. But it's another thing when you see the re response from the AI team. And with 12.5, we are seeing that. We'll share all of that today. So you've got to uh, start off with what Elon said uh, just you know a few hours ago. He said, still some issues with this release, but you can see the magic already. We're pushing it out only to those who have requested advanced releases, setting on screen that is defaulted off, right? Uh, for regular users, version 12.5.3 is probably suitable for wide release. So expect the 12.5.3. So it's not perfect. There's still some issues, but it's almost there. And you'll see the responses from some of the early users. This is beyond excited for many of them. He also confirmed that ASS, which is actual smart summon, is separate code. It will be bundled with some sort of point release with 12.5 next month. This is something we've been waiting for for so long. This is smart summon. This is supposed to be able to call a car to wherever you're standing, and it'll come out of the parking spot, come to you, and or banish. And it will send it back. That would be the, the final um, feature complete that we're waiting for. What do you think about these two uh, clarifications by Elon? It's very exciting. I mean, we are definitely converging on what is going to be really the product. And this convergence is happening a little bit faster than I had imagined. I placed it somewhere towards the back end of next year. Um, it's just, you know, I'm so used to software releases being later and later. Um, and so it's quite exciting. I, I will say that there's probably um, some work to be done um, in terms of actually getting, you know, the robo taxi part of the equation complete. But my goodness, the rate of improvement now is ever since they made this change to the single stack and got rid of code, the rate of improvement is quite staggering and it's going to improve. It's definitely going to improve that, you know, the, the more the the training capacity increases, the shorter these cycles of training are going to be. Although they're always training to more and more and more data, but but the cycles are going to get shorter, relatively shorter. And so we're going to see even greater improvements. I will say on Smart Summon, you know, when it was originally released, and I think it was almost three years ago now, um, I actually had a lot of success at first with it, and mm -hmm. then it got crazy after a while. But it's a very exciting product. It really is a very exciting product. The, the value add of having Smart Summon, even if you're not using FSD um, as, as a kind of a, you know, as a, as a way to solve driving at all, uh, Smart Summon is a real asset to have if you're just a casual daily driver. Yeah, I'm curious how many people will actually use it, uh, you know, drop themselves in front of a Target, Walmart or whatever, and then let the car find its own parking spot. What a headache it is to find parking sometimes. Would you trust it? Would you feel comfortable doing it? Um, and then the ultimate would be sitting there. I've been saying for a long time, do you agree with me? Like I've been saying that this could actually be the chat GPT moment because people will videotape it. They're in a parking lot. They're going, oh my God, this car is finding its own parking and it's dropping this person off. And that's more likely to go you know, viral on TikTok and Instagram than anything else we've got. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I saw it. I saw it. You know, when I was using Smart Summon, it was in my company's parking lot. Every day, yeah. I would summon the, the car 
And man, we got a lot of photographs taken, a lot of, oh my God, a lot of, ah, look at this, there's nobody driving, a lot of that. And so that will definitely be a moment. It's and, uh, you know, I, it's a pity they didn't keep going. I guess it was the switch off of the radar, whatever it was, it, they didn't keep going on it and, and it became unusable. But man, it, when it was working, it was really a great product. Okay. I can't wait. Cause if it can move faster than, you know, the previous one was so slow. So it's like, okay, it's kind of interesting. It's a toy. Okay. Let's watch what Ashok Kalaswamy, Ashok Kalaswamy is the director of autopilot. He's in charge of the whole program. And what a couple months ago, a month ago, he said it's the beginning of the end. And he did reply to John Carmack when he, John Carmack was a special, uh, a well-known technologist saying, um, He's now realized that you can just data your way to this now to get to the edge cases. But Ashok normally doesn't post a lot. In the last few days, he's been reposting and posting, and I'll show you some of what he's been doing, and that tells you something. So here's him uh, several, a week ago, he said this, if you liked FSD 12.4, you're gonna love 12.5. Um, but this is the most recent, just yesterday, just last night. Tony Duan, who works for the AI pilot team as well, he said this, lots of hard work and many late nights went into making of FSE 12.5 from across the team. Many ideas were simplified and reworked from first principles. This is something you, I want you to talk about how, yes, it's a point release from 12.4 to 12.5, but actually it's a complete retraining. They're yeah. almost rewriting. Hope everyone has a chance to try it out. It's a release we are proud of. And he's not yeah, the only yeah, one. Yeah. This is a miracle. Um of of end to end the, the, this is a miracle really of ai you can put you can create an architecture and then press a button and then the ai takes over and actually generates yeah. the what amounts to the code so you know you can do these fantastic re-architect of end to of you know the entire system and still keep a release cadence going. And they've obviously done that several wow. times. I mean, I, I'll tell you 12.4 really blew me away. I mean, I, I had a neighbor just knock on the door and come to try out the cyber truck. He was blown away by the way. <laughs> and then I took him on in the X on 12.4 to show him FSD. He couldn't believe that it wasn't me driving. You know, he closed his, I said, close your eyes <laughs> and you'll tell me who's driving. He couldn't figure it out. He yeah, couldn't yeah. figure out when I was driving, when the car was driving. That's how, you know, human-like mm -hmm. it has become. And that's something that you, you don't experience in the Waymo. I don't know if you've driven in a mm -hmm. Waymo yet, yeah. but you certainly don't experience that in the Waymo. And you certainly didn't experience it in, what was the other guy? Uh, the guy that they had just closed down the Ford, uh, the, the Chef Cruise. company. Air. Cruise, yeah. Cruise yeah, Kyle Voigt. Yeah, it was terribly jerky, mm -hmm. jerky. But but the the progress these guys have made is quite stunning. And I just want to say one thing because I've had I've seen a lot, a lot of angst and and turbulence uh, on X about uh, hardware three versus hardware four versus AI five. People are saying, oh, you know, now my car's worthless because I paid all this money. It's not going to be able to work. Hardware 3 is going to do just fine. Yeah. Just fine. It's not an issue. The, the, you know, there are some fairly technical people who are spouting off about saying, oh, Hardware 3 is not going to be able to cut it. Listen, guys, they haven't even begun to optimize yet. Yep. All they're doing is getting the damn thing working it's going to collapse in size dramatically, dramatically. Hardware 3 is just fine. Yep. And the AI pilot team have has said that they feel like it, they can do that too. So you've got, <laughs> this is the photo that, uh, um, was it now, Tony Duan shared, FSE 12.5. They're really proud of it. Ashok Kalaswamy replied to him, said, as version 12.5 is rolling out wider, feeling thankful to their very talented Tesla AI team. The energy in the team is great right now. Can't wait to get to work every morning. They are pumped. They're excited. They feel like they've made a huge progress. Another member of the Tesla team said, Shrihari Sampath Kumar said, 
proud to be working with the insanely talented Tesla AI team pushing the frontier of physical intelligence, where you not only need to be able to drive the car smoothly and safely, but also do that within extreme latency constraints where every millisecond counts. We have optimized the AI inference stack from ground up and managed to five times the parameter count of the model in this release and yet run in real time with extremely high performance per watt. So yeah. you can see their excitement for this. Yeah. I mean, they're at the cutting edge. I mean, it's not often as a software person you get to write, you get to participate in historic changes in these in historic infection points. You know, open AI with, you know, had its GPT, chat GPT moment. Yeah. I think these guys are having their moment right now. There's no doubt about it. It does feel like it. So let's uh, let's make that decision if we think that 12.5 is special. Is it different than, you know, like a huge leap over 12.4 that, because I'll show you, there are people who say it is done. After testing, the so small number of people have tested 12.5, the reactions are through the roof. Let's watch for yourself. Here is AI Driver, one of the early users, often the early users. He said, the delicacy of FSC 12.5 has with the steering wheel is seriously next level. Hard to get across on video, but this is already smoother than any Uber I've ridden in. Ashok Swami himself replied to this post. Let's watch this. I mean, it's just a simple little quick, quick clip, nothing really fancy about it. He just thinks it's very smooth. Here's what Ashok said. There is a huge focus on improving both safety and smoothness in this release. One of my personal tests is to not spill an open cup of coffee while on 12.5 was the first version. Uh, sorry, uh, while on FSC, 12.5 was the first version while, where I was able to do that for 30 minute long drives. That's amazing. That's, Amazing, isn't it? Can't won't spill a cup of coffee. <laughs> and, and I remember so distinctly that very first drive I had in FSD, I don't know, three, four years ago. I forget the actual timing of it. Oh my God, yeah, it was that's right. <laughs> yeah. And shout out to my wife. She put up with it. She oh, was kidding. game from the beginning. It's amazing. Oh, but, you know, my, my spouse it. would not do that with me. And in fact, I finally turned on let her try it try it with me with 12.4. And it was like, that's her moment of realizing, okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure once we do one for five, she won't even know the difference. So here is a guy named Michael Baylor. You'll see many of these posts that I'm showing here. Ashok Alswami reposted. So again, the director of AI is reposting comments about 12.5. Yeah. He doesn't do this, but now they're so proud of it. It, yeah. it really is something to consider why he's doing this now, you know? Um. Michael says, first impressions, this is a huge leap forward. Just drove to random places in LA for 45 minutes, all on city streets. Absolutely incredible. By the way, Larry, I think I told you, I'm predicting LA is going to be the first location for a wide variety of reasons. Are you nodding or are you shaking your head? I, I You know, I heard what Elon said. He said everywhere, all at the same okay, time. Okay, gotcha. What yeah, I yeah. heard. <laughs> all right, you're right, you're right. All right. Uh, he says this right out of the gate, 12.5, drove all the way out of a tight parking garage with no disengagements. All prior versions of FSE required critical interventions to quite literally prevent a crash. I did have to tap the accelerator pedal a few times because of a car behind me, but the driving was near perfect. Rest of the drive was zero interventions of any kind, did not touch a thing, extremely natural. It no longer drives like a new driver. I think the big question now is can they add support for other Tesla vehicles? And you just talked about this beyond hardware for a Model Y and make a single stack without regressing. And then, um, oh, there, yeah, so that one is Michael Baylor. So let me uh, play his video. I guess there's no audio here. Oh, okay, so this is like a, a parked UPS. What's around it, very nice, no hesitation. It just kind of drove just like you and I would. There's nobody there. There's a car coming, so he, the car stops. He sees this, oh, oh, it knew. Brilliant. It knew. Uh, okay, yeah, I thought yeah. I thought it was a lane. It knew it was an intersection, so he knew that that car wasn't going to come. It was top street, yeah. Wow, it is smooth, right? See, the, the, no more of that creeping. You know how yeah. it would stop at the stop sign two feet away, then it would creep forward. 
it's like yeah. smooth. That that's the thing that pissed a lot of people off. So well, beautiful. I think that it's almost obligatory to do that creep though. Well, right, required, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was good. Then you've got uh, Ashok uh, saying forwarding this person's Mike P, not just us, and. Uh, Mike P said, first 10 mile drive on FSE 12.5. I want to contain myself because I've used prior versions that have delivered very good experiences and then suddenly seem to get worse. But here goes. That was by long shot the most incredible FSE experience I've ever had. And the first time I truly want to jump out of the vehicle and flag anyone down willing to hop in to see what the F is going on here. Every single twitch of uncertainty was completely gone. Never a moment of wuss driver. <laughs> Jerky wheel hesitant of BS. Not one moment where I felt like the car was a clueless toddler that probably need me to jump in. I felt zero desire to hover the brake pedal at any point on this drive. I fully trusted the vehicle for the entire duration, and that has, hasn't ever happened before for me on any version. For the very first time, I approached a stop, accept, right, turn sign with zero other cars around in a place I've never driven an FSC before. Not a single twitch of uncertainty or indecisiveness. I literally clapped and laughed at how good it felt. I've had tons of issues with 12.3.6 where the car would accelerate too hard into bends, come out of a hard turn, not properly reaccelerate. not the slightest sign of any of that on this drive. Absolute butter, smoothness, and grace. I'm still in disbelief and feel like maybe I just got lucky on this drive. Only time will tell. As with all other versions, I need more time to see how well it holds up. Need to test it on my work commute, my ultimate testing grounds. But if what I just experienced remains stable, holy F shit. <laughs> Y'all really probably about to change the world. One last thing before I end this novel, I want to include some cons. I'm historically a massive FSE talker. <laughs> no nag eye tracking is a gun to the head. You really can barely glance at the screen without getting yelled at. At the same time, it's worth it for no nag. Interesting. What? Most people are saying it's actually much more preferable that you... That well, he you said see. it's worth it for no nag. Yeah. Same Automatic, time automatic speed offset was a little too slow in some places. So they're still saying that speed is still not uh, smooth. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's the comment. What do you think about everything he just said there? Yeah. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't even think we're even close to where it's going to get to as good as it is now, it's probably good enough to go, but just remember that we're at the beginning of the journey, not the end of the journey. Right. So the end of the journey is where it's now doing this in Europe, everywhere in Europe, that is doing it in China, that is doing it in other crazy places in Asia, crazy from a road, you know, behavior perspective. That's the end of the journey. We're just at the beginning of the journey. It is a very, very exciting journey. And here's the thing. There isn't any company even remotely close, not even remotely close to this. Yeah. And we're just at the beginning of the journey. It's taken seven years to get here. But boy, have they, you know, have they, I mean, in the seven years, they've collapsed a 50 year evolution. It's pretty credible. At the earnings call, Elon said that we are speaking with multiple large OEM yeah. partners, uh, maybe even more. And then he said that, but, you know, they need to be able to produce a million cars, not just 10,000. So are you thinking um, that it has to be a Chinese automaker? You know, I've given this a lot of thought because, you know, I really presaged this two years ago. I spoke about this. Um, I've given it a lot of thought and my guess is that it's a chi one of them, at least one of them, is a yeah. large Chinese uh, OEM. Somebody's mentioned BYD. It could be BYD. They certainly have the resources to do what is necessary to be done from an engineering point of view. Um, and it could be a combination of Baidu plus BYD or Baidu plus another Chinese company. I, I don't think Tesla will license it all by themselves. In Europe, I've, I think that Renault is the best prospect in terms right. of size and capability. That was my guess. 
Volkswagen is the natural. It would help them to do it. But, you know, I, look, it's going to take a lot of engineering. Never mind the software. Never mind the the FSD computer. Just think about all the engineering throughout the car to make the car fully software capable. Um, it's going to need a lot of work. So this is the time that OEMs need to start that engineering work to be able to roll it out in, you know, within a reasonable period of time, two years. So the ones that sign up first are in a pole position, absolute pole position. And uh, it, it would pay a third ranker or a fourth ranker to, to actually commit because they're going to drive to the first rank almost instantly. Yeah, you have to believe, and if you don't believe, don't do it. But but I think I I I really think that it's a huge game changer. Yeah. And if I were running a you know, competitive company, I would have signed already. Yeah, I I think it's interesting that Elon said, you know, we're only going to partner with companies that will commit to making a million. Uh, of course, it's going to be electric You're vehicles. Right. Yeah, but when you think about the engineering that has to go into it, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to sign without you know yeah. the target being multi millions of 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 output. But it also means that when this goes, you're going to get to scale faster. You're going to get to like it's just going to grow so fast. Um, you know, the thing about 12.5 is if the experience of 12.5 truly is, obviously this is too early, we've had just a handful, but obviously yeah. we're confident because we're hearing Elon, uh, Ashrock and the team coming in and they're proud of 12.5. So if this early experience from these early users carry forward for the next couple of weeks and next month, this could be the version that an OEM is forced. Like you said, it's almost, this, it's almost like this... Uh, uh, you know, race, who's going to be, who's going to do it first? Because if you just waited one another week, Tesla just needs to sign two. And then they're probably, if you're the third, you're probably unlikely to get it for five years or something like that, right? You I think have... Ford would be crazy not to sign it. I mean, they would be crazy not to sign it. I just can, can, they, have, can they do a million? Because they only do, because I guess there are 200,000 EVs now. They can do a million. Ford could do a million. Look, here's the thing. FSD is going to change the world yeah. Yeah. when it actually comes. And when it actually comes, all this thing about, you know, yeah. all of this is going to go away. And so if they are serious about what they're trying to achieve, they would sign tomorrow. Existential risk for them. So this is uh, Bradford Ferguson. He's obviously somebody that's well known in the Tesla community. And so he's, you know, we kind of... Um, we respect his opinion, and it's, un, it's shocking that he himself, because he's a conservative uh, analyst, and he said, it is done. My friends, by the way, Ashok Alaswamy reposted this, okay? He just did this last night. It is done. My friends Tesla on version 12.5 just drove us around flawlessly for two hours, 50 miles on city streets. It drove better than I can. Smoother on acceleration, no flinches or hesitation no disengagements and i only did one accelerator press to have it go faster stopping is smoother it goes smoother from the creep no stopping a second time stopping at lights and stop signs is smooth my only minor quibble is i wouldn't slow down as late it wouldn't is i wouldn't slow down as late for speed bumps but that's it oh okay yeah he wants it to slow down sooner for speed bumps over yeah. two hours of driving that's the only flaw and that's a that's just a difference in preference it was a boring drama free drive. I can now 100% see why Elon is thinking more about unsupervised self-driving. We are here. They've done it. I don't know, man. That's that's a bold, 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 bold statement. We are here. You They've understand done it. that Bradford has been a critic of yeah. FSD, pretty tough critic of FSD. Yeah. So uh, the previous version, point four, he was not comfortable with it. He gave it a pretty bad rap. Um, but you know, I mean, these are still early days and I think we've got, you know, 12.6 to come. I think we've got 13.0 to come. Uh, and, and this is happening, uh, you know, a year to a year to a half to a year earlier than I thought it would happen. 
This is amazingly bullish. Amazingly bullish. Yeah. Okay, so they're not going to be constrained. They can just data when when John Carmack said, "I believe they can just data it their way to it." You've had a number of they uh, uh, like it and repost it and reply to it. So it's just a matter of time. But it looks like you're saying it's actually going faster. And the the incredible thing is that twelve point four to twelve point five, Elon said is five to ten times better. Twelve point five to verse more. And 12.6 will be five to 10 times better than this. So it's not just this, oh, we're incrementally, you know, these a couple more disengaged um, edge cases. It's like a, a leap. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think that everybody's angst about hardware three versus hardware four versus AI five, forget, guys, just put those in the, seller and lock the door it's not going to be a problem there may be down the road some functions that it's not going to be that version three is not going to be do but we are a long long way from that a long long way from that yeah the ability to collapse this code has you know they haven't begun they haven't started to flex their muscles on that yet you know he do you have to have the hardware three like my 2020 uh model three has hardware three in it it has to be part of the network because elon said it at the earnings call yeah. he said yeah. they all we're going to be instant scale seven million cars will automatically yeah. be able to join the tesla network it's up to you if you want to put it in that means all the 2020s and beyond beyond before that had to be a part of it so there like you say i don't know why people are worried about it he's already saying that no it's it's going to be part of robo taxi um this is the shocking thing it's like the hardware they put into all the cars that they've ever sold that's what these guys are saying these auto these engineers are going we had to do it with low latency low compute at the inference chips you know uh, they're proud of what they were able to do five times parameters yeah, low latency. The lower the, the the smaller the the more compact the um, the the code is, the lower the latency. So you're going to see this code compact quite dramatically. Uh, there are so many techniques available to compact, and we're beginning to learn that um, in these um, you know in in these in this kind of code that this. That the smaller the code, the more adept the software is. So we, we're going to see improvements, dramatic improvements. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if it's worth uh, playing just a clip of what Elon said about this. We postponed the sort of robo taxi or the sort of product uh, unveil by a couple months. Where where it's shifted to ten ten and. This is because I wanted to make some important changes that I think would improve the the big the, 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 the sort of the robo taxi the thing that thing that we're the main thing that we're going to show and and we're also going to show for a couple of other things. Um, so moving back back a few months allowed us to improve the the robo taxi as well as add in a couple other things for for the unveil. That'll be. I, I just forwarded to the, the ending. Over 20 million. Uh, this, this is an immense scale. Um, and and or, the, the car is able to operate 24 7, unlike the driver. So uh, the, the capability, like there's this basically instant scale with a software update. And now this is for a customer owned fleet. You can think of that as being a bit like Airbnb. Like, you know, you, you can choose to allow your car to be used by the fleet or you know, cancel that and bring it back. It can be used by the fleet all the time. Uh, it can be used by the fleet some of the time. And then Tesla would take, would share in the revenue with the customer. But you can think of the giant fleet of Tesla vehicles as like the giant sort of Airbnb equivalent fleet, Airbnb on wheels. The, the, I mean, then, you know, in addition, we would make some number of cars for Tesla that, that would just be owned by Tesla and be added to the fleet. I guess that would be a bit more like Uber. Um, but this, this would all be a Tesla network. And, and there's an important clause we've put in, in, in every Tesla purchase, which is that the Tesla vehicles can only be used in the Tesla fleet. They cannot be used by a third party for autonomy. Okay. And 
And do you think that scales like progressively? So you can start in a city with just a, a hundred of cars and you you grow the number of cars over time? Or do you think there is like a critical mass you to get to to be able to offer like a service that is of uh, competitive quality compared to what like the like Uber would be typically delivering already? I, I guess I'm not maybe I'm not conveying this correctly. The entire Tesla fleet basically uh, becomes active. You know, this is obviously maybe there's some number of people who don't want their car to earn money, but I think most people will. It's instant scale. Thank you. Okay, so that is what you were saying earlier, which is that they're not going to do it pilot one city at a time. They're just they're thinking <laughs> instant scale. Instant oh, scale everywhere, all the U.S. because they got federal improvement approval. Um, it's kind of a Elon version of let a million poppies bloom. I, you know, I mean, he's going to provide the software and the cars are already there and let anybody do it. And it could be an Uber who does it as well as it could be, you know, Larry Goldberg in his backyard do it. So that's what it appears to me he's saying. Now, why would Uber not want to do it? They've got, you know, they've certainly got the customer base because they have to, and the answer to why is they have to use the Tesla network. They have to use the Tesla app. Well, they'll have to do some integration. So it'd be interesting to see that. Um, but, you know, I'm excited for the, what the future brings. Look, we do know that uh, Tesla will not do what other people would have done, and they will not do it the way other people do it. Really? So we'll see, that, you know, it sounds to me like they haven't given this thing as much thought as perhaps we thought they'd given it, or perhaps that we've given it, but we don't know what's under the covers. We just have no idea yet. And we're going to learn on 1010. Okay. Well, Tesla strategy is they're, we're testing it now. This is the pilots. And they once we get to the point where it's unbelievably incredible, so safe, so incredible, then at that point, they'll just turn it on everywhere. There's no need to do pilots in city by city. They're just turn yeah. it on. Yeah, I think we're talking about two different things. Mm. When you say this is the pilot, this is the technical pilot. This is the pilot of the ability yeah. of the car to drive. Right, right. I'm talking about the commercial pilot. Yeah. What you know, what what does it look like to offer this as a service? To offer the the car to turn up on its own, the car to drive you. What does it look like as a service? And I I'm with Pierre on this one. I, I think it's going to be very difficult for an individual to run this thing as a service, even with a Tesla software. I think there are so many implications from a yeah. business and management and control perspective yeah. that really falls to major organizations, whether it be Hertz or whether it be um, whether it be uh, Uber or, for that matter, you know, an XYZ company. I think each company will bring their own flavor to it. Individuals will bring their own flavor to it. My sense is individuals will fail, largely fail. Yeah. I mean, you look at the average Turo um, operator, I think only it's one tough. in three Turo operators are of any value, yeah. and it may be a lower percentage. Those guys who do run a good Turo service are excellent. But when you rent a Turo car, you're really – it's a gamble. It's like, yeah. What what am I gonna? You know, the two Turo t cars I've ever rented have been basically. I wouldn't do it again. So, and for various reasons. But anyway, bottom line is, it's going to be an interesting ride. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Nice way to put yeah. it. Interesting, interesting ride. Well, thank you so much, Larry. Follow him on X at Tesla Larry. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.